Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to create your own 3D custom title template inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So when you're on the edit page in Resolve, you can go up to the effects library, and then go down to toolbox and effects in order to find a effect called fusion composition. This is essentially a blank clip that allows you to add whatever you want to it on the fusion page. So if you're making a title from scratch, this is probably the one you're going to want to use. So I'm going to drag this onto the timeline here, and then we have this new completely blank clip we'll use for our title. So with that selected, I'm going to go over to the Fusion page, and you should see one node at the bottom, this little square box here. So I'm going to move this out of the way here, and then we can add some nodes to build our title to the left. So if you don't need any of the 3D features, you can simply use a text plus element instead which showing right now allows you to create really basic titles. For instance, you can just feed this straight to media out and you don't need any 3D renderer or any extra nodes. You can just have normal text on the screen. But if you want all of the 3D features, then you're going to want to be building your titles with these tools over here, starting with a text 3D. When you have multiple 3D nodes, you're going to need to merge them together. So we might as well click on Merge 3D with Text 3D selected and add a Merge 3D node after that. This just combines multiple 3D nodes into one. And then after we have them all combined, we can use this one at the end, the renderer 3D, in order to take the 3D objects and convert them to a 2D image that can be properly used in video. And then after everything is rendered, we can connect the output, the gray box, to the orange triangle or the input of media out. And that can be the basic chain for our 3D text title. So if I click on our text 3D node on the left here, we can give it some text. So maybe I'll call it 3D template here. Inside of the preview window, I'll hold control and scroll out with middle mouse wheel. And we can see that currently the text doesn't exactly fit the frame. So I might want to decrease the size on that. We also may want to take the vertical anchor and make it centered so that it's already in the middle of the screen rather than slightly above it. So that allows it to be perfectly centered. And now connecting to this merge 3D node, we may also want to add in some extra shapes. So I'll click shape 3D a couple of times to add a few shapes that we can use. So these shapes are by default in a plain shape, which is basically like a piece of paper that's completely flat. Uh, we may want to change that to something else though. For instance, this sphere is going to kind of be like a perfectly round egg. So that might be a more interesting shape and we'll change it for both of them. Now with the material for these two nodes, we can go over to the material tab and select a diffuse color for them. So I'm just going to pick some random colors on this basic color selector, hit OK, and then we'll go over to the other one material and select another color. Uh, let's go with this light blue for right now. So right now, all three of our objects are also stacked on top of each other. So what we might want to do is organize them in 3D space. One way we can do that is using the transform tab on each of these nodes. So the Z translation is going to be how close or far it is to the camera as things are set up right now. So I'm going to push them back in the Z translation to move it behind the text. So the shape 3D one, let's make that something like a negative two or so. We can also move them off of the center by using X translations. Maybe I'll have this sphere pop a little bit out to the side. Okay, so since these are 3D scenes, you also have the option of adding lighting and shadows to them. So if we click on the render 3D, we can enable lighting and optionally shadows as well here. Uh, when you enable lighting, you're going to see everything go all black because there are no lights in the scene. So what you can do is right click over here, go to add tool. And there's this whole category of things you can add to 3D scenes called 3D. So a lot more than what you saw on the toolbar. The toolbar only includes the basics. But here we can go to light and ambient light. And I can feed that into the merge 3D node in order, to, <clears throat> in order to start getting some lighting on the scene. So if I increase the intensity of this light, then we'll see the color start to come back. Also, we could add a directional light if we want to have the scene cast some shadows. So I'll right click, add a tool, light, directional light, and we'll feed this into merge 3D. So the directional light doesn't uh, require position. It applies on a direction across everything in the scene. So let's go to, and I believe by default, the direction is basically from the default camera towards the scene. So that's why you see it on the surface here for everything in the scene. Um, by the way, if we put the merge 3D on the left node over here, we could actually see our 3D scene 
So with this, we can rotate around and actually see that it is in fact 3D. So let's just rotate that over there. So looking at the scene from an actual 3D perspective uh, may give us a better perspective on exactly everything going on in the scene. And we can also click on the different objects and have gizmos to move them around. So for instance, I can drag the sphere like this in order to reposition it. Can also do the same thing with lights. So if we click on the directional light and I'll just move this out here, the position of it doesn't matter, only the angle. Then we can see the direction where these light rays are going, which is straight down here. If I pull this up here, then we could uh, say adjust the rotation in order to angle it differently. So let's let's give that a shot here. So I think we want X rotation. And now with this X rotation, the light is actually angled downwards. Once again, position doesn't matter. So you see if I change the position, nothing changes in the final render output. So one last thing we can show for this video is to take the 3D text here and actually make it more of a true 3D object. Right now it's more like a flat piece of paper cut around to the letter shapes. But we can add some depth to it by using extrusion. So select your 3D text element and then go down to the extrusion tab and we can just add some extrusion depth here. So I'm going to rotate in the 3D uh, merge scene view and let's add some extrusion depth here. And as I extrude it, you'll see the text pops out more and more. And then when we get this final angle for the text, you can actually see the 3D shape of the text take place. And then when we take a look at the final render for the text here, we can see the text characters popping out because it has that 3D depth. So maybe just for the sake of visibility of the text, I'll take this light blue sphere and I'll darken it. So we'll make it more of a darker blue sphere. Okay, that makes the text a lot more readable. So. That should be okay for right now. So just like any other clip in DaVinci Resolve, you can also animate the properties. So I'm going to put some cards in the video. So I'm going to put some links in the video. So I'm going to put some links in the video cards. Um, if you want to learn about keyframing properties such as the position or size of your text, but really it works about the same at this point as any clip that you would be editing on the edit page as well. So now how do we save our title for reuse? Well, we can go over to the edit page. We look to this media pool area and now we want to show a special type of bin called a power bin over here in the media pool. So I'm going to go to view show power bins. So by default, you'll have this master power bin here. You can just drag the fusion composition in there if you want, or if you want to categorize your items in your power bins, then you can right click and do add bin and type in a new bin name. So what the power bins basically are, are media folders, which are going to exist across all your projects. So anytime you have something in a power bin and you want to bring it into a new project, you just need to enable power bins in the view if it's not there already, and then just drag your items in. So to save your fusion composition, you just drag it up here. And then to use it, you just pop it into a new project. So if I bring it from there into here, it's going to be loaded into the project. Then I can see it over here on the right side view. We've just basically copied it back into the project. And so if we use this in a new project, we just need to drag it in once again, and it will be exactly the same as we copied it to the bin. And we can easily go and edit it once again by going over to the Fusion page. All of the nodes and all of the settings will be here, and we can edit it. And then if we wanted, we could save a new derivative of the template over here in the media pool as well. And after we're done with any edits to this template, if we want to save that copy, then we can just bring that into the power bin as well, give it a new name and save it as a derivative. So that's the basics of how you can create a 3D custom title template inside of DaVinci Resolve 17 and how you can save and reload it across other projects. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my future content.